Well, good morning. It's great to see you today. It's Friday the 25th of November. So, um, well, November's almost done. So just dropped off the girls at school. Um, we had a, a, a nice time with them yesterday, which is great. So um, here we are, John's Gospel, uh, Chapter 1. Uh, and this is the little subsection. This is called The Calling of the First Disciples. Yesterday we looked about how... Um, uh, or in the previous days we've looked about how John the Baptist said, look, there's the Lamb of God. <clears throat> Two of his disciples went and followed Jesus and they said, um, what, you, what do you want? And they said, and they said, and they followed him and they come stay with him. And one of these was Andrew. Uh, and then he went back to, so, to his brother, Simon Peter, who we now know as Peter. <clears throat> and he told him, we found the Messiah. And uh, he said, and he will now call you Cephas, which means rock. <clears throat> Verse 43 says this, the next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, come, follow me. Philip was from Bethesda, Andrew and Peter's hometown. So the next day after this, so they've been there, they decided to go to Galilee. Now, I don't know what kind of a trip that was. What we do know is that John the Baptist, he was preaching probably near Bethany at, by the River Jordan and um, and uh, Galilee. Well, Galilee at uh, Bethesda is in Galilee. It's on the north shore of Galilee. Uh, <clears throat> and Bethesda actually means home of the fishermen, home of the fishermen, which makes sense because Andrew and Peter were fishermen. And poss possibly, probably Philip had in his blood as well that he probably was, he originated from that all around that. I just love this because actually it's great because um, <clears throat> Jesus chooses, <clears throat> or rather God chose, because Jesus said, I only, <clears throat> this is the thing about this, isn't it? He said, the next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. Well, he said, uh, later in scripture, it tells us, I only do the things I see the Father doing. I only say the things I hear the Father saying. So Jesus didn't go there of his own accord. He said, I don't do anything on my own accord. I, don't, I just do what the Father tells me to do. That's a great way for us to live. For us to go. So that means we need to have that intimacy with God. We need to have that intimacy with God so we can hear what God is saying. You know, Israel got into trouble. It said they went, he said, every man went home and they did what was right in the sight of their own eyes. And guess what happened? They turned to foreign gods. They did this, they did that, they did the other. And Israel always got itself into trouble. It slid into apostate, ap ap apostate, ap blah, blah, blah backsliding state anyway that's what that means and they when they did what seemed right in the eyes of in their own eyes rather than inside they rather than the sight of god they had got themselves into all kinds of trouble jesus was quite the reverse jesus said i'm not my own i'm, I'm only here to do what the father sent me to do and he had that intimacy he spent time in his presence he 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 listened he spoke he had communion with the Father and with the Holy Spirit, and we know, and um, yes, you might say, well, that's that's not fair because Jesus was God. But yes, but He gave up all that. He had to go and make time, just the same way that we did. He came in the same way that we do, to speak to God the Father. So it is possible for us to do that. So for us, you know, okay, but you might say, well, actually, I'll, I have to go to work today because that's my job. I have to. Yeah, okay, that's probably what the Holy Spirit. That's probably what God is saying to you. Go to work. But when you're there, when you're speaking to people, when you're dealing with the issues, when you're things there, let the Holy Spirit guide you, give you the words to say. Don't just speak and react. Often we get into trouble because someone says something, and they even sometimes they like to, they kind of press our buttons and they press our buttons, and we're going to go, rah, rah, and we react. That is not how we should do. We should. We should speak the word that Jesus wants us to speak. Jesus said, like he said, I only say the things I hear the Father saying. If we did that, if we lived that in our lives, do you know what? We would be so much better off. We had so much less trouble and strife and hassle in our lives if we only did that. And that's what Jesus did. He said, here, I, he decided, oh really God the Father decided that Jesus should go to Galilee. And he went there and he found Philip, who was obviously a compadre or perhaps it's come from a small village, 
of Bethesda. You don't know how many people were in there. Can't have been massive. Uh, he was from their hometown. And what I love about this is that Jesus chose, or rather God chose, because uh, Jesus did what the Father was saying to him to do. He chose ordinary people. Galilee was from the north. So if you're living in the north, well, we happen to live in the north of England. You're in the right place. Uh, Galilee was in the north. And that's what they said. We know that we know they're Galileans because their accent. Why? Because they were like, because they were speaking with a Geordie accent. Well, maybe not a Geordie accent, you know, but they were speaking with the equivalent of a Geordie accent. We know that that's where you're from. <clears throat> So God chose ordinary people. He chose ordinary people and he chooses you and he chooses me. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing special in us in, in that sense and thing. But God has chosen us. Isn't that amazing? God has chosen us. He's chosen us. He's chosen you. He's chosen me. There's a work that only you can do. Only you can do. And only a work that only I can do. Because God has chosen you, he's called you, he's planned, he's got a purpose for you. You're not here by mistake. You've got God has got so much more for you to do. If only we could just open our, we don't need to open our mind, we just need to get, ditch human ways of thinking, ditch what we've been taught, ditch that kind of way of, uh, this is and this is how it is, if I, if I don't see it with my own eyes, I won't believe. We have to ditch that way of thinking and come around to God's way of thinking because God says, you know, faith, um, if faith is something that to be sought after, it's a gift of faith, a gift of the Holy Spirit. Ask for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We, and the Bible says this, that we can have the mind of Christ. We can. We don't have to think our own thoughts or think those worldly thoughts or those things that kind of, which have been, uh, which we've learned behaviour through our lives. But actually the Holy Spirit, we can know the mind of Christ and change, that's what hope, Romans 12 says, change the way you think. So be transformed by the renewing of your mind so you can be my mind renewed, think Christ's thoughts, say the things that Christ wants us to say, and then we will see results. Listen, I'm past seven minutes, so time has gone. I'm just feeling I'm getting in my stride. Hope you have a great day today. Say the things Jesus tells you to say today. Nothing more, nothing less. You're not going to go far wrong. Take care. Have a great day in Jesus' name. Amen.